Hey guys, Andrew McFarland here from StarterJuicebar.com. Hope you're feeling happy and healthy and inspired to launch your business or grow your existing businesses. Today, we are talking about the three phases of any business and how it applies to you and the things that you need to be aware of based on the phase that you're in and also where you want to go. If you're in a startup phase and you want to ultimately grow your business exponentially, what the things are that you need to be aware of from a team standpoint, a process standpoint, a mental framework and mentality standpoint, and more, this is gonna be a big deal. So if you guys are out there and you wanna franchise your business at some point, you wanna have multiple locations, it's gonna be very important that you stay to the end of this video so you can really understand what you need to know. But before I dive into today's topic of conversation, if you guys are new to the channel, and you don't know who I am, you don't know what we do over the last 10 years, myself and our company has had the pleasure of supporting hundreds of entrepreneurs all over the world, launch and scale successful juice bar businesses, smoothie bar businesses, acai bowl concepts, juice trucks, and more, as well as running our own businesses in this sector. All the information on this channel is coming from that experience. So diving in, actually, before I dive in, if you guys haven't pressed the like button yet, now's a quick invitation to do that. I appreciate you for showing your appreciation. As you know, these videos do take a lot of time and energy to make. And so we appreciate your support for the channel. It inspires us to make more content so thank you for doing that. Now, diving in. It, this is something that actually um, really came to me recently as I was thinking about many of the clients we have, my own journey in this process, and the mentality that I had in the beginning, the things that I was doing in the very beginning of my business, and how that evolved over time as I went from one storefront to another storefront and just the business was growing, and how I had to position myself, the things I needed to think about that were very different than early on. And if you don't become aware of this, then you very likely will be limiting yourself and your business's growth because you don't understand what's needed in each phase. So let's first start by defining the three phases of any business. First phase is the startup phase, okay? Second phase is what I call the operations and maintenance phase. The third phase is the growth phase, okay? Now, these phases do intersect. It's not like there's a clear moment where you're like, okay, now I'm moving into this next phase, but there are moments where you might be in the maintenance and operation phase where you're tweaking things, you're refining the process, and you're also looking to grow your business and you're doing that at the same time. But the important thing to be aware of is that in each of these phases, there is a specific kind of mentality that you're going to have. There's a specific process and there's a specific kind of people that you're going to need to associate with and work with in each one of these phases. So let's just dive into it. In the startup phase, the mentality that you're going to need to have is going to be one that is, first of all, very creative because you're creating something from nothing. You're not growing a business that already exists. Some people as entrepreneurs buy businesses and then they grow those businesses, but you're starting up something that doesn't exist. So normally the kind of mentality and the kind of person that thrives in this kind of environment is someone who's very creative, who's good at creating something from nothing, okay? That's not always easy to do when you have no experience, which is a lot, why a lot of people work with us and our company so we can help in that creative process, right? Whether it's the systems, whether it's the menu, whether it's the branding and all of these things, but it takes some, someone who is a visionary to start something from nothing. The other thing, if you're going to do it correctly, is you need to have the mentality of someone who is long-term focused, who knows what your end goal is and can create a solid foundation for the future. Because when you're in a startup phase, if you don't have the right vehicle, if you don't create the right kind of business, guess what? You're not gonna thrive. You're not gonna have the foundation for you to even maintain anything because you're probably gonna fail in the first you know, few months to a year. And then you can't grow something if, it's not, if it doesn't actually get off the ground, okay? So that's another thing. And then the team that you're going to need to have is a group of people who are also creative, who are tenacious and work through problems because businesses, when they're in the startup phase, just like a child is most vulnerable in the beginning, a startup company is most vulnerable in the beginning because you haven't really accomplished and established a business that has product market fit, which is the next phase. When you get into a transition from when we would say, okay, you're going, even though kind of in the world of business, business linguistics, you're still a startup if you're a small company, it's early days, you know, first few years, but there's a distinction and a clear distinction when you go from being a company that has no customers, 
is just an idea to opening your doors, having product market fit, meaning that customers enjoy your product, they're coming consistently, and now you're in a place where you transition into what I would say is the maintenance, the operations phase, the tweaking phase, where you're really refining your system, okay? Now this phase, from a mentality standpoint, you need to be very consistent. You need to be, in a lot of ways, the people who thrive in these kinds of dynamics and environments are people who are very left brain, very analytical, very systems oriented, because a lot of the refinement process comes from systems. Now, I know that there are a lot of, and the reason I'm bringing all this up too is because you really wanna ask yourself throughout this entire conversation, throughout you listening to this video and gaining more awareness about these things, what kind of entrepreneur are you? And who do you need to bring in or how do you need to change your mentality in order to highly be highly effective in each phase that you're in? A little insight that I came across a number of years ago is that a lot of people aren't aware that oftentimes in the world of tech businesses is that the people who start tech companies, the founders, the founding team, are generally not the same people who grow those businesses. A lot of times the CEOs of those companies, the founders of those companies, will move aside and then let other people come into those businesses to help those companies exponentially grow. And so this might be the case for you. You might only be a startup entrepreneur. You might be an operational entrepreneur. You might be a growth entrepreneur. But most of the time, if you're watching this channel and you don't have a business yet, you're most likely either a startup entrepreneur and an operational entrepreneur, and you either need to mature into being a growth entrepreneur if your goal is to grow the business, or you need to bring other people on to help you grow your business. So diving in a little bit further, when you're in this operations maintenance phase, tweaking phase, refinement phase, it takes consistency, it takes systems thinking, it takes meticulousness, attention to detail. So if you're a highly creative person and you don't like numbers and you don't wanna get into the minutia of training people and putting training guides together and all these operational elements, then you need to bring people on your team who can. Okay, it's very, very important. And this is really the, the second phase of the business. Once you get to this phase and you feel like you've really gotten a strong foundation, then you can look into growing your business, okay? That might be franchising the company, it might be opening multiple locations. The mentality here is also different, right? You need someone and you need to be the kind of person who is capable of raising capital, is in a lot of ways uh, less um, conservative oftentimes than people who are just in operation and maintenance and systems oriented. Visionaries and great entrepreneurs can see further and oftentimes they're calculated risk takers. Okay, they understand that in order to grow, it might mean taking on debt, it might mean taking on investment capital, it means that you're going to make the investment up front in order to reap the returns later on. When you're in the maintenance phase, you're a cash flow business, right? You're maintaining the business from the income of the business, it's maintaining itself, it might be growing slightly, but I wouldn't consider it a hyper growth phase of, of a business, okay? When you get into hyper growth phase or a more accelerated growth phase, then, you need to be in a place where you are capable of raising capital, like I said, you're capable of taking risk, and you're intelligent enough to understand how the business needs to reorient itself and shift. Because running a company when you have a single storefront is very, very different than when you have multiple storefronts or if you're franchising the business. Very different model altogether, okay? And what you're gonna be doing day to day is also different. So let's take the franchising route, for example. Actually, first, first story I wanna tell you, I remember I was speaking to someone many years back and they were saying, I really want to franchise my business. Can you guys help me? I said, yeah, we can potentially help you. I just need to learn more about kind of where you're at and, and what you need in order to make sure your system is, is, is ready to grow. And I started asking them some questions and I said, okay, are you guys profitable yet? And if so, how much? No, we're not profitable yet. Okay. Are you able to step away from the business or are you working in the business full time? He's like, I'm the only employee in this business. And maybe I have one other person help me part time, but I can't run my business hands off. Okay. Um, how long have you been in business? Six months. So everything was just showing me that this person was very far from having a highly proven, profitable, consistent business model that they were ready to grow into a franchise. Because when you're franchising a company, from a financial standpoint, it's going to require um, an upfront investment. But also from an operational standpoint, you, it's, although you're still in the juice business, what you're doing day to day is so different 
right? Your customers change because your customers become your franchisees. Your customers are no longer the people coming to buy juice from you directly, right? You're going to be running more of a corporate uh, company than a brick and mortar store, right? Because your, your, your uh, business model has completely shifted, even though you're in the same industry. And so this is why it's important to know where you're at in the process. And if you're in the startup phase and what you need to do to get to the maintenance and sort of tweaking phase and more of a sustainable income phase, maybe a mild growth phase from a single store to, okay, I want to open up multiple stores. And now my mentality has to change, right? I have to be growth oriented and not just thinking about maintaining my business. Because oftentimes, if you're not aware of this inside of yourself, it's not to say that any of this is right or wrong. If you're not aware, you'll become limited by your own lack of understanding. Just like another example I can give you is like in real estate, there are different kinds of real estate entrepreneurs, right? There are developers, there are house flippers, there are buy and hold, you know, people who buy apartment buildings and hold on to them for the long term. None of these are right or wrong. It's just different kinds of strategies. Now for you, you might be, for me, I can speak, I'll speak for myself. I very much enjoy startup phases of businesses. I love the creative process, which is why I love helping people launch their juice bar concepts as well as grow their businesses. I'm very into the dynamism and the excitement of something that doesn't exist and then it comes into existence. This is my personality. I'm good at operations. I don't love operations. I'm good at growing businesses, but I also tend to take sometimes a more conservative approach when growing businesses because I'm also a lifestyle entrepreneur. I really enjoy having a certain amount of balance and time in my life. Whereas if you get into hyper growth businesses, it's almost like you're always in startup phase where you're always having to grow things and it can take a lot of time and energy depending on you know, what your upside potential is and what kind of market you're in and how much money you raise, so on and so forth. And so um, the last thing that I wanna to mention too when it comes to being a startup entrepreneur and a growth entrepreneur in both of these phases, oftentimes you need to know how to raise money. Okay, that's something that they both have in common. And it's going to be more or less depending on how much you want to grow your business at any given period of time. So all this being said, I hope that this helps you understand because as much as if you guys, oftentimes when you're a new entrepreneur, all these things that I'm saying right now might seem like, yeah, that's interesting, but you don't really, really, really get how at the foundation of everything is how you position yourself and your team. When you're in a growth phase, for example, you need different kinds of people. You don't, you, you're gonna, if you're running a franchise, you're gonna need different kinds of people. You're not gonna use the same people who are opening your store and running your single store and your GM and your district manager to run a franchise. Now they might be able to help you train people, but they're not gonna be the people who are, you know, doing the deals and negotiating the contracts, right? You need a different kind of team when you get to another kind of model or a different scale of business. And so understand that, and you always have also have to reposition yourself. So there, these are all the things that it really took me a long time to understand, which is why I know how important it is, but oftentimes I know when I make content and I talk to people, I might say something and I'm like, this is very, very important, but it's hard to connect to because everybody who's new might be thinking about, well, what kind of equipment do I need? And where's my location gonna be? And all these things are also very, very important, but deeper than all of these things at the core is, what are you doing day to day? Are you letting your limitations as an entrepreneur become the limitations of the business? Or are you wise enough to know, okay, great entrepreneurs are always great at positioning themselves and building great teams and understanding if, if you only do this as an entrepreneur and you do this well, you'll be very successful, okay? This is probably the most important skill set is knowing what you need from a people resource, financial resource, and a strategy standpoint and getting those things together so it can get you to any phase that you wanna be in. This is the bi biggest skill set. more important than knowing how to make juice, more important than knowing anything about the nutrition of a product. This is, the, these, are the, these are the core skill sets that all really, really great entrepreneurs have. So I hope this helps. If you guys haven't liked the video yet, press the like button, because I'm sure if you lasted this long, um, I'm assuming you liked the video, so press the like button, we appreciate that. Questions or comments, put it in the comment box below. If you guys do need help with your business startup, maintenance phase, growing your business, refining your processes, reach out to me personally at andrew at startofjuicebar.com. Happy to help you. And subscribe to our channel. Last two announcements. Follow us on Instagram at startofjuicebar. Also, we have a podcast on iTunes and on Spotify, the Juice Bar Experts podcast. So I'll see you there if you like to listen or you'll hear me there. I won't be seeing you, but you'll be hearing me on the podcast. And until next time, Hope you guys are happy and healthy, inspired to grow your businesses. This is Andrew McFarlane with StartedJuicebar.com. I'll see you at the next video.
Hope you guys have been enjoying the video content. If you are inspired to launch your juice business, but you're not exactly sure what steps to take, for you, we've created a free ebook, 15 Steps to Starting a Juice Business from Scratch. This is gonna give you a high level overview of everything you need to do from where you are now all the way to opening your business. Now, if you wanna go even deeper, we've created an online course, the Juice Bar Master Blueprint. This is gonna go into great detail into every aspect of starting your business, everything from branding, to menu development, to finding the right location, the equipment that you need, and so much more all the way to launching your business. There's links for both of these in the description below. I know you're gonna find a lot of value out of them. As always, hope you guys are happy and healthy, wishing you a lot of success, and I'll see you at the next video.